Hello everybody, welcome back to Iceland with Forging a Nation here with Thur Akareri. You join us in the Conference League, that's right, despite being bullish about our chances in our Europa League playoff against Punic from Armenia. I think we could do this, I really think we could do this and get into the Europa League. They actually dumped us out 5-3 on aggregate, but with three wins and a draw from our first four games in the Conference League, the only thing really that we have to worry about, hopefully, is whether we can actually get a playoff spot rather than having to go into a knockout round playoff. We can hopefully go straight through to the round of 16 if we get in that magical top eight. Hi everyone, yeah, we'll kick things off with that first leg against Punic away in Armenia. As you can see, um, we had comfortably more possession, but we didn't do enough with it. So we had justifiably beaten 2-0, I would say. They were comfortably the better team. We had all the ball, just didn't do enough with it. But it was in the second leg where I think we have every right in the world to be frustrated. We drew 3 all on the night. Despite having 26 shots to their 5, an XG of 4.5 to their 0.79, and this time 71% possession. But we did suffer from what I am fast becoming to think is a bit of a meta in FM24, and that is far post crosses. Admittedly, it doesn't help when you gamble and play your 5 foot 4 fullback with a jumping reach of 4. That's on me, but. When you look at the rating he had in the game of 7.5, it showed that he did offer plenty going forward, running the most out of any player in our side and with four key passes. So, uh, yeah, frustratingly knocked out. But as we said, we did go straight into the Conference League where we had touched on the fact that we did feel we could potentially be a little bit more competitive there anyway. And to be fair, that is exactly what we've done. We are currently sitting second, level on points with three other teams, two points behind Genk who are top, knowing that if we can get a, some sort of positive result in our next game against Köln, we will be basically guaranteed to go through to at least the next stage of the Europa League. But a win will be phenomenal before we go away and play. I think we're playing Slavia Prague or we might be playing Sparta Prague. I did check before. In fact, let me have a look. We are playing Slavia. So, um, yeah, if we can get any sort of results against those two, you know, in terms of wins, I think we've got a good chance of getting top eight. I can't remember how much, like, I touched on the youth intake last time, but it sucked big time. Our best player was this guy. Burke here, Scarpa Denderson, um, centre half. 17 um, determination, but I really don't expect a huge amount out of him. Uh, same when it comes to, to this guy, the goalkeeper. And this goalkeeper might actually have some potential to be useful. But um, yeah, otherwise they all were pretty poor. Um, well, I can't even remember if this guy was any good. No, they all sucked. Um, so we're just going to basically just develop them. For a little bit, you know, for £10 a week, I don't think we can really go wrong and see if we can make them into some sort of useful player. Um, Lone Farm has sort of shrunk slightly with the end of the season. We had a few players come back. A few players we have managed to extend their loans, like Braggerson, Sigtrix, and Rizzo, and Brites, as well as Melstead. Some players did not want to go back out on loan, or their loan clubs did not want to bid for them. And a couple of players did end up... Um, leaving at the end of their contract, such as Hesdal Christofferson, who joined Akranis on a free. In regards to the Conference League, we beat Albanian side Velaznia 2-1, drew 2-0 with Stadram, which was really frustrating. We were 2-0 up and then a deflected goal from Maxime Busi before Gonzal um, Oscar Vargas gave the ball away twice within about five seconds to the same player, passed it, blocked, uh, re recovered it, Passed it again, went straight to the same player, who then basically fed it down to the winger. They squared it across, and Amin Salama slammed him from close range. Um, but thankfully, we then went and beat Fortuna Sittard, before then beating Levski Sofia 4-0. This game, refereed by none other than England's own David Coote, gave us three first-half penalties, with Alan Schwarz and Gudmunder Valdemarsen seeing their efforts saved by their keeper. Thankfully, Matt Lerver was able to put away his penalty that was sandwiched in between them before we really put the game to bed in the second half with Olivia Tome and Christian Alvarez scoring in the 50th minute somehow uh, before Mats Lerva 
uh, added his second of the game in the 54th minute to put us comfortably 4-0 up and giving us the win on the night. In terms of the league, it was a record-breaking year for us in both club and league situations, scoring the most number of goals and getting the most amount of points. Uh, uh, sorry, most I think it was most amount of points for the league, no, for the club, most number of points and most number of wins for the league, I think. It was definitely most number of wins, uh, with 21 wins for us. Um, literally, we saved it until the last day. So we drew against Breitha and Akranis. Um, and then last day of the season, we beat Stan and we were level on the record with Braitha, 20 wins for the season. And then we managed to get that 21st win, which made us record holders. Little update on Geronimo Nunez. The guy has just failed his intensive language course and said he is now feeling really unsettled each and each day and feels like he wants to leave. I tried to sort of convince him to stay. Things will get better. Don't get me wrong. He's not the future role at this club. He's been a really useful rotation option, I feel, for us. But it looks like we may well have to sell him. And to be honest with you, with his wages, um, the fact that he's foreign in regards to sort of player registration, and I'm kind of tempted actually just to make the most and try and get some money for him. It's a bit frustrating that we spent 325k on him and he's now only valued at 140k, but we'll see what happens. Also just going to do a little bit of housekeeping just for those interested in the stats. We've got them nice and summarised here for us. We've got Alan Suarez with 36 goals this season in all comps. Goodmunder Valdemarsen getting most goals in the league. Um, we also had Trifonov leading the way with the most assists uh, in the league and Valsen getting the uh, most clean sheets. Um, but in all comps, Schwarz, 36 goals, 16 assists. So contributed 52 goals over the season. Um, yeah, absolutely phenomenal work. And the final little update, when, uh, when the current Iceland manager decided to leave, the National FA approached us. We didn't even apply. I just thought, oh, he's, he's left his job. I wonder what's going to happen there. They, they came to us and said, do you want to manage us? Um, and I thought maybe not because international management generally on football managers been a little bit pants lately but i thought you know what it might be a good chance to grow the national reputation which may help bump up our youth intakes if the youth rep is going to work dynamic youth rating is going to work i don't really know but we'll see we're going to give it a go see what happens uses it a bit of a trial to see if we can improve the uh, overall sort of state of play in a, in icelandic football generally and uh, see if we can maybe bring the nation up to such a standard that it will encourage the rest of the league to go pro i don't know i'm just trying to see if what we can do with the national team and how it can impact the league uh, in general now we did offer out Geronimo nunez and montevideo city talk and wanderers um a bid from 41k meaning we'd make a massive loss on him which is really frustrating but he would be unsettled if we uh if we didn't let him go and i think in the interest of keeping people happy Think we just have to take the hit and let him leave uh, obviously he's got less than 12 months left on his contract as well so maybe that's influencing his his value a little bit but a failed experiment for him he, you know, admittedly he was brought in as a rotation option for that anchor role uh, and that deep line playmaker role and uh, unfortunately it looks like he, he's going to be leaving now for the game today against Köln, we're going with the recovering Sebastian Perez, I can't remember what his injury was but he seems pretty much like he's ready to go but he is actually now wanted by Al Etifak Reported bid of 1.2 mil potential in the offing, which would see us make a 200,000 profit at the bare minimum. But I reckon we could probably bump that up a little bit. And Olivia Tome is also wanted by now. He was originally wanted by Al Tawun, but he's also now wanted by Al Etifak. Now, fortunately, Tome does not have a release clause. And for the right amount of money, I would be open to selling him. Um, I have been thinking for some time about whether we potentially go to a back. Five. Now the back five serves us so well at Partizan um, and I think with some of the players we have it would lend itself quite naturally to that. So selling uh, Tome would free up that wing slot. Obviously Swaj is expecting us to sell him for 500k if a bid is made, particularly from Fluminense. But if he stays he could quite naturally slip into um, the front two of Valdemarsen. If he leaves, I would actually be quite looking forward to the prospect of getting Schmidt and Lerva in the same team. Both very, very good players. Lerva is just in better form. That's why he's down to start today. Zabala will be a great wing back. Ragnarsson can also play wing back, but I would kind of like to strengthen this area if possible. We do actually have a new left back joining in the uh, 
in the next summer. We didn't have a huge amount of transfer budget or anything. We only have about 500,000, but um, I'll touch on him after the game if I remember. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we could potentially do that, if, especially if Perez stays. We'd have Hjallopsen. We've got, um, where is he? I, mean, I might not be able to show you him here, but we've got a, um, a right back joining who can also play as an outside centre centre half, like a wide centre half if needed, who's coming in from uh, Malmö. Uh, we did touch on him last time. Um, so we could quite easily go to a back three with wing backs. And I'd potentially go maybe like if, if especially if Swaj left, like two holders, two tens, and a and a and a advanced forward in Valdemarsen. Now, last time we played Köln, we did actually beat them two one. So I will be looking to do the same. We've got David Coote again. Let's hope he gives us all the penalties like he did last time. But the Köln team potentially seems a little bit stronger on paper than it did last time. They got Brennan Johnson up front. Um, he has been marked. Thankfully, they got Ami Nadli, Francis Onyeka, uh, Jan Thielman still, who does need to be being tightly marked. Um, but yeah, who knows? Like I said last time, we did all right against them. I've not really changed a huge amount uh, in terms of um, play style. We're still going positive. Um, in fact, well, we, we might change it to balance, but I think we stick with it for now. And hopefully we'll have enough about us to get some sort of result here today. And if not, hopefully we can recover and get a result against Slavia. Depending what happens today, we may well do the Slavia game. We might not do it. I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I just thought I'd bring it back for this one because it's potentially massive in terms of our Europa League, Europa Conference League campaign. But as I said, I'd like to think we're pretty much guaranteed to be going through regardless. Um, general rule of thumb I, thumb I find with these European competitions is points-wise, number of games plus one often can be enough um sometimes you maybe need number of games plus two maybe three um but i often find as long as you get more points than games you've usually got a decent chance of sneaking in at the very bottom end of that uh that the uh, the playoff um the you know 24th ragnarsen with a nice driving run with that being the start of the highlight, I kind of expected us to not really create anything, but who knows, we might be. Like I said, Zabala is tiny. He's not the best at defending, but he is generally pretty good going forward. And that was a lovely little work ball. I honestly thought Alvarez was going to attack it as it came across, but he left it for Schwarz, who laid it off for him, and it was a much better opportunity as a result. And there's another chance. We will actually be looking to exploit those uh, far post headers today because um, according to our scouts, um, near post headers, they are very, very good at defending from. Um, so I kind of want to shift the priority to the far post really. So you know what, maybe we'll just create a new far post routine, but with an in swing instead, and we will do the near post less often in this game see if we notice a difference and we'll just leave it at that for now i won't do too much with the uh the base settings we'll just let it happen and see if it works but yeah apparently apparently that that's a that's a thing with this curling team they are very good at defending near post corners but are better at def uh, you know hopefully therefore not as good at defending far post tealman just that muscle swage there don't always like to see that's a great save from Valson. Good header away by Ragnarsson. I don't mind him putting it out for another corner. I'd rather him just get rid of it. Coefficient wise, we are due to sort of stay where we are currently at the end of this season still. But next season, we're looking like we're actually potentially going to go up to sort of 32nd, um, which would be a lovely little leap that we could make this year. Absolutely brilliant. Hopefully, um, all the sort of Icelandic compatriots will start doing the business and getting us some coefficient points on the board. Um, well, not that they haven't, but hopefully start getting us some more. Um, today, I if we can't win, um, I'd rather sort of shut up shop and get a draw just for, again, for the coefficient points. But hopefully we can get that win. So far, we're, we're playing well enough. We're we're um, giving them a, a really good a good go, and most of the highlights 
and the chances being created are going our way. And this could sit quite nicely for Delanger if he wants to have a shot. He does. Takes a couple of deflections on the way through, which actually brings it back into Nubel's grasp. And this is where they take the lead just on the stroke of half time. Oh, it's a great save from Valson. What a save. I honestly thought they were going to score then. I thought this was going to be typical. Tomei's a bit tired, not having a great game. So I think we bring on Trifonov. Honestly, it's kind of touch and go whether you play. Oh, and they have scored on the stroke of half time. And it does not get much easier than that. Lovely flick on from Jekyll and uh, Alishkri. Nods in right in front of the no one. Well, Valdemarson's following him, but he had to jump on him, and you, you're never, never catching up. I'm going to give Tomei 10 minutes because he apparently he was very motivated by our half time team talk. So let's see if he can deliver and uh, get to well, put performance in and get us back in the game. Otherwise, he is going to be coming off. Like I said, we'll give him sort of 10 minutes if he's not shown any signs of doing anything by 55 60, he'll be off. And it's 55, 60, and his rating is, is flirting around, still at the same point. So on comes Trifonov, and Zabala's picked up a knock. Thinks he'll be okay, but I'm not going to take any chances. We're going to bring on San Yang, and actually, no, we're not. Where's Pedersen? Because we're going to bring him on instead. And we're going to bring Trifonov on for Tome. And we're not really seeing a huge amount out of Rykov yet, to be honest with you. I think we might do now, because Valdemarsson's not having a great game. Obviously, we're just trying to bring Rykov in because his, his match sharpness is pretty terrible. His familiarity with the team and the way we play also not great. We're just taking things nice and gradual with him as we try and bring him into the team. I don't know why Gonzalez is up so high. Usually, that's like a fullback up there. Like It would be like Sigi Jensen. I don't know why it was Gonzalez. Nice. Lerva is having a good game, but we'll probably look to freshen things up by bringing Schmidt on. This is a great run from Rykov. Brilliant cross. Yes! That's why we signed Rykov for that moment of quality. What an assist. Lovely header from Swaj. And you know what? For once, we, well, I say for once, we benefited from far post headers a fair bit. Um, but yeah, you know what? I might do a test and just test basically just set up instructions for all the wingers just to hit the far post from crosses with someone and just see if we notice that we just end up scoring tons of goals from that and that could be worth a shout love oh tries to find swaj nearly does though comes to the line what a lovely ball in field from magnuson he's gonna hit this oh and he scores what a what a hit son take a bow absolutely brilliant the pass from, from Ragnarsson seemed so unconventional at the time. Sort of hits it on the half volley, straight onto De Lang's foot. Touch, touch, goal. The keeper, Nubel, is nowhere near. I don't know if it took a deflection or not. It didn't look like it did, but who knows with him being that far away from it. Wow, okay. That was that was not expecting that level of turnaround. Um, I am a little bit concerned about the condition of Ragnarsson. Unfortunately, with Christensen going back to Copenhagen, and uh, Siggy Jensen coming back, he's not actually registered for us. So, um, he's uh, Ragnarsson is our only left back. Might have to take off Alvarez or Alvarez. I don't know. I pronounce it differently as with most things, most things slightly different each time. But we'll bring on Vargas. Hopefully, he won't give the ball away like he did against Ram. And here's the Langer. Carson tipped over. And with. 11 minutes of normal time. We are the ones who are still ramping up the pressure, but we are going to go balanced. There's a win here. It will be phenomenal. By the way, if you can hear any background purring, once again, I've got a cat chilling on my lap. This win will basically guarantee us a playoff spot, I think. 
if if we hold on we're gonna have what 10 minutes to go i reckon five minutes about a time maybe that's i was gonna say that looked like he was offside i don't know if it, if he left it as a result of that or what but that's um he's offside rykov he was definitely offside be more disciplined slow the pace down valson Ooh, we didn't realize we had a higher defensive line on Usually it's standard, but it must have uh, it must have gone on to higher. Like the assistant must have recommended it for one game, and instead of doing it for next match only, <laughs> he did it for all games. And it's another corner, and like we are still putting the pressure on. Um, I'm gonna make sure these guys are are being are being watched. Swaj is flagging. Can he deliver anything with this cross? So is Ragnarsson. Ragnarsson's done. Absolutely done. All time cannot come quick enough for, for our left side. Swaj taking his time. Letting everyone catch your breath. Brilliant. Decent cross now. Oh, we don't even get to see the corner. Cheers. Ramp up the time wasting. Slow the tempo down a little bit more. Honestly, this will be huge. This will be huge, huge, huge. Like I said, we, we've beaten these previously um, when we were in a much sort of much earlier stage of development, I guess. And um, to go and do it again. And I'm pretty sure last time we played them, we may have been away from home as well, actually. I can't remember. But... Um, or oh, actually, no, it might have been might have been at home. I might be uh, getting a bit carried away. But we can go and beat them away. Basically, guarantee ourselves progression through to the next round of the, the Conference League. Hopefully, skipping that that little playoff where we we'll potentially play some, um, you know, quite tough opponents. I think he's offside. Yeah, he's been given us offside. Lovely little pass from Schmidt. Great composed finish. But he did look offside. It will obviously go to VAR, and we've got five minutes to hold on. But yeah, what's this? But he is he has done well today, Rykov. He's come on. Excuse me, had a really positive impact. Obviously, got us uh, got us back in the game with that brilliant assist for um for Schwaj. And Slavia are winning who are playing, but it looks like Sittard, who um who we beat, uh have gone ahead against Partizan due to a uh, own goal from Svetozvar Markovic. Um and Nubel is up. But basically the reason why that's important is because Partizan were level on points with us. Schmidt's here. Schmidt's on the run. Nubel's out of his goal. Someone have a shot. He was out of his goal. You could have gone for it, guys. No. If they score from this now, I'm going to be fuming. They're going to score here. Please tell me he's offside. I don't think he was. What the feck was that? Great save from Valson. I thought, this goes in, I'm going to spit. Like, how do we mess that up? Counter-attack, keeper off his line. End up losing the ball due to a sloppy pass to Gonzalez, who's then having to track back. And then they go and counter us. Fantastic counter, but should never have happened. Never have happened. Absolutely ridiculous, ludicrous passage of play. Get in! Get in! Literally with the last kick of the game! Surely, surely the last kick of the game. I'd have been fuming if the ref had given him a penalty then, because it did look like a foul on Schmidt as well. Trifonov ghost past his, his fullback. I thought this cross was terrible, but Schmidt, obviously foul, but Schwarz outside of the foot, it looked like, into the bottom corner. 
That's got to be it, ref. That's got to be it. It's got to be it. What are you doing? What are you doing? So there's been two injury time goals, hasn't there? But still, come on, man. If they score now, we're a minute over injury time. I don't care about the extenuating circumstances. I'm going to be livid. Yes. Get rid. Just get rid, man. Just send it into the corner. Come on. Don't you friggin' dare. Thank you, Vargas. Oh, what a pass. What a lovely pass into space. Yes! Yes! What that means is we are third. And yeah, Maribor could theoretically catch us as good partisan. Sparta could actually potentially catch us if we were to lose. So... But... Oh, it depends. It depends. I think there's too much jeopardy still for us to guarantee top eight. What that does mean is we are guaranteed to go through into the next stage of the Conference League, though. And that sees us get some even more lovely, lovely coefficient points. We're on course for a five-point season minimum now, which is absolutely brilliant. 16.5 um, coefficient points for the 32-33 season. We're currently due to end this season on 12.75, which, as I said, won't really see us go up. And it won't really see us go down at this stage unless Lithuania and Northern Ireland somehow do anything. But as I said, you know, this is a minimum. We can only get more points now. The gap to um, Kazakhstan and Armenia is too high, really, for this season for us to really gain on them. But next season, we can really look to sort of make some substantial progress. We have just rejected an absolutely disrespectful transfer offer from Flamengo. 68,000 for Alan Schwarz. Bear in mind, we rejected 200k from Fluminense like earlier on this year. Now, in the interest of not dragging things out too long, actually, I'm going to leave this episode here. We've done what we wanted. We guaranteed our progression through to the next round of the Conference League. Whether that's going to be into straight into the round of 16 or into the playoff, you'll have to find out in the next episode, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed it today. Obviously, that next game that we'll be seeing will be sort of February time, potentially a bit potentially a little bit earlier i'm not sure but usually they're sort of around late jan early feb i think because they usually wait for the europa league to finish i believe so um yeah i will be seeing you then take care everyone i hope you have enjoyed today's episode what a game mate eh? and uh yeah phenomenal ah yeah i knew i was gonna forget it where is he lucky matthew or matthew so a south african left back coming in from cape town city um Scouts found him, 17 years old, definitely some room to grow, comfortable on both feet, fairly determined, work on that consistency. I think we could have a decent player on our hands, especially if we do switch to wing back role. I think he could be someone go good going forward because he's got decent physical at this stage. Um, and uh, he can actually jump, which makes a nice change for some of these fullbacks that we're getting through in a, as new gen so yeah someone who i think we could potentially develop into that three and a half hopefully four or five star player that he is uh, he is potentially tipped to be so yeah fingers crossed he'll come in and we can develop him nicely if needs be we flip him on in the future but yeah i think because siggy Ernson wants to leave we are going to be pushing the sale of him in the uh, in the, the next window and uh, yeah let's see if lucky matthew or Ma is it matt lou sorry matt lou not matt matthew matt lou let's see if lucky matt lou can be lucky for us take care everyone bye for now i'll see you all very soon